Good morning. Your Excellency, Kazirsad University Administration, Professors, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, now is the time to begin the opening ceremony. Welcome to our academic seminar, uh, Bangla and Thai Studies, in search of a common route between Bangla and Thai. First, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Prithadar Kamutsakon from Kazirsad University International College, and I've been assigned to MC this event. Just to give you an overview of the event, we are um, going to start the opening ceremony and then um, there will be a series of presentations by three specialists. Now, may I invite Associate Professor Ban Cha Chinasi, Deputy Director of Kase Sat University International College, to give a report explaining the background of today's seminar, please. Good morning, Your Excellencies and Associates from the Bangladesh Embassies, Professors, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. So allow me to explain the backgrounds and objectives of today's seminar. Recently, Kazakhstan University International College, in cooperation with a lecture from the Faculty of Humanities, Kazakhstan University, hosted a training program in integrated Thai language and culture for diplomats from the Bangladesh embassies. During the course, the lecturer noticed that there was a similarities between Bangla and Thai. So for this, we came up with an idea that there should be a seminar where experts from Bangla and Thai exchange their knowledge about their own mother tongues. In the meantime, Kasesan University International College 
uh, is also designing a full-time bachelor degree in Thai studies for software development. Surprisingly, this idea corresponds with our future program. Therefore, we agree to co-host this seminar. Also, because this represents a cooperation between two organizations, so we invited International Affairs Division for Kazakhstan University to join us. We hope that the knowledge gained from this seminar today will be useful for everyone to everyone here. Thank you very much for joining today's seminar. Thank you so much for the background. Um, next, may I invite Associate Professor Ladawan Bongti, Vice President for Academic Affairs of Kaseysan University, and also Director of Kaseysan University International College, to give a welcome speech, please. Good morning, Your Excellency, an associate from Bangladesh University, Professor, distinguished guest, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of SSI University, I would like to welcome all of you to uh, our university, and uh, I'm very grateful uh, for the uh, Bangladesh Embassy to uh, to to give honor. Of Kazakhstan University to honor this uh, seminar entitled Banka and Thai Studies in search of a common route between Banka and Thai. So, Thai Thailand and Bangladesh have a uh, diplomatic uh, relationship for a long time, more than 50 years, I think, and uh, we are concentrating in the academic uh, relation. Uh, Kazakhstan University was the first established. Uh, 18 years ago, and we started with the uh, most uh, mainly agriculture science at the beginning. But today we have uh, uh, several subjects, many subjects, uh, including uh, we have these uh, faculties of humanities and faculty of social science, uh, which uh, uh, today is the, uh, some of the students also present here. So uh, it is our it's, I think it's a good opportunity for to, to have the collaboration uh, between SSI University and Bangladesh. And uh, we at, at the, at, uh, today, I think the Faculty of Social Science, they also have uh, uh, Asian Studies. So I think it would be nice to extend uh, to also including uh, Bangladesh uh, to, 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 to the regions. So, uh, yes, as I said, uh, thank thank you for the uh, your embassy, your excellency, to present to the, to our uh, seminar today. Uh, actually, Bangladesh has uh, 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 come to has come to university. Also, uh, you have joined our facet that fair as an agricultural fair. You have uh, shown your a product at our uh, university fair, and Your Excellency has also visited our uh, campus at Kampeng San. So we hope that uh, we can extend uh, more of our collaboration. Uh, I I hope that uh, today's seminar will be fruitful to both Bangladesh and Thai, as well as the uh, Kazakhstan University. So thank you very much for uh, giving us honor. Thank you very much for the speech. Now, may I invite Your Excellency, Mr. Mohammed Abdul Hai, Ambassador of Bangladesh to Thailand, to give a remark, please.
especially Atom Ruchila and Atom Pizza, for their continuous support in organizing this event for the first time. I also thank my embassy team for their hard work. We we'll continue to co-host the event regularly in the future. And thank you very much for this kind occasion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Next, may I invite Associate Professor Ladawan Ponti to give a souvenir to His Excellency, please. ครับมองกล้องนี้นะครับมองกล้องนี้นะครับมองกล้องนี้นะครับ 1 Also, the embassy would like to offer a gift to um, Ms. Vice President. And also to um, the Deputy Director of the Society University International College. And also to the professors, um, Associate Professor um, Govix, please. And to Assistant Professor Sopak, please. เอ่อครับนะครับมาครับนะครับเอ่อต่อยุ่งนะครับครับครับเอ่อต่อยุ่งนะครับถ่ายรูปหมู่ไหนใช่ครับถ่ายรูปหมู่หนึ่งทีได
prof um, associate professor for him from, from the Department of Thai Language at our university. Um, please. By the way, uh, please be informed that if you have any questions regarding the presentations, um, you can ask them during the Q&A session. Hello. Yes, uh, Excellency, uh, the Ambassador of Bangladesh to Thailand and the Vice President of the Sahaja University. He's uh, a good guest, he is a gentleman, and also uh, Professor Akim, online from Bangladesh. Okay. Um, and good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Kuwait Pimpong from Kajet Saad University. I'm very glad to be here with you all in order to present my 
a topic regarding the Sanskrit in Thai. I uh, believe that uh, this topic will be the way to make a link between Bangla and Thai. And especially, I would like to express my sincere thanks to uh, Embassy of Bangladesh, including the University, uh, to organize this really international seminar. I do hope after this seminar, uh, both sides we have something to be uh, done regarding the collaboration in the future, something like this. Okay, uh, we go to my topic in briefs according to the invitation of time as given about 30 minutes, 30 minutes something like this. Okay, uh, uh, my topic uh, to be presented today uh, Sanskrit in Thai uh, in search of a common road between Bangla and Thai. Uh, the first one I would like to uh, introduce uh, about the Thai language and Sanskrit. So far as we understand about the Thai language as compared between Sanskrit, uh, the different thing is uh, the language memory because the Thai belong to Thai language memory but on the contrary Sanskrit is uh, about Indo-European so this is the nature of the language is different uh, but uh, today we talk about the common root uh, because uh, Thai uh, when we consider about the loan word in Thai we can say that Sanskrit loan words has been used the most uh, uh, as uh, available in the dictionary of the Royal Society of Thailand. And also I uh, made an observation on the Sanskrit as used in Bangladesh or Bangla. It's been the pure Sanskrit also has been used in Bangla. So I think uh, well, this, this is for the uh, point to be uh, study more in the future as to be the collaboration in the term of language or culture studies like this. So about this, I introduce about the language as Sanskrit. Okay, now difference, but okay, will be uh, the uh, similarity between each other when we make the compilation. And the second one, I will present about the phenomenon of Sanskrit words in Thai and it's a change. Uh, I, I think this point is similar uh, as compared to Bangkara. Because when we bring Sanskrit to you, it's time. And we have to put it into the searchings according to fire child of uh, searching theory. Like uh, insertion, uh, uh, sound deletion, sound explanation, sound metathesis, and watching something like this. We have to put it according to this goal. Because after that we can choose in Thai, even if in Bangla also. I, I also uh, uh, I, I just have a limited time to study Bangla before my presentation. Via YouTube, uh, something like this. Like Sine uh, Ho, uh, Sine Ho is been loved like this. In Thai also Sine Ha, but especially in Thai language, we have to put the total mark as well because uh, this is for Thai style or the language. Uh, this is for, uh, and as I show you, I talk about the in in terms of the uh, Sanskrit language into Thai and also in Bangla. Uh, this one I have uh, presented already it's about the uh, uh, Sanskrit language as used in Thai, and we have found most as we observe in the dictionary of the Royal Society of Thailand, and uh, especially Sanskrit and Pali included. Uh, are the important languages as the word to be uh, to, uh, to to be Thai terminology? When we have uh, like some uh, uh, some new uh, word uh, used in Thai society, you have to look for Thai first. After Thai is a uh, a priority uh, of the Sanskrit to be used as the terminology. Okay, uh, this is for uh, the priority importance of public service. 
and I will show you right now. I, I talk about the subjects before using it in Thai language. And this one I told you already. It's according to the following five times: insertion, deletion, assimilation, and metathesis, and subjects like this. I show you by the word uh, as. Ah, uh, this is for the examples of the Sanskrit words I use in Thai language. Uh, I bring the example from the poem because I have been heard. I I I, I live in the Bang 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 Bangkalit because I heard the uh, Sanskrit came to Bangladesh via poem, right? Uh, like this. So so I, I look for a poem in Thai. Uh, literally as well. So I've been uh, the poem from the great uh, from poem Sun Tuan Pu uh, is great uh, in Tala as well. So this is for uh, Sanskrit he used in this poem. Uh, according to some insertion uh, I, I put here this is for uh, poem in Thai letter. Uh, uh, you can focus on the words I have in the line uh, underline this one. And there is a bad, bad trait, bad trait, for example. According to this one, this can be translated to Thai that. But this one lies me as I expect to serve at your feast, my fans. Although the first power puts up the fry into me, I will not pay attention to them. I like this. This is for whip. But okay, we focus on uh, bad, bad trait. According to this one, this is a subject like. Be having this one to use in the poem, but about this, uh, it has been has gone through the true searchings already according to uh, the insertion of the sound because that uh, read right, but the but 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 and this is a transcript, right? But she read according to Thai style, but what like this, okay? And then uh, we put read uh, at the end of the verse, so. After putting this was make the this uh, uh, vocabulary and uh, the poem melodious according to style of the poem something like this. Okay, and the uh, second one is a uh, sound deletion. This one also important when we bring this one to uh, use in the poem. Uh, you can emphasize about the uh, as I underline this one. Pirum, actually, in yeah, Pirum, uh, Pirum, yeah, uh, Pirum, yeah, something like this is It's been uh, joy, uh, happiness, something like this. But okay, we bring this one to use. Uh, we have to delete some like, uh, in, in front of the word. Uh, because according to the poem of Posudi, you have to pay attention to how about the number of the uh, subject or vocabulary, like for each line, something like this. In Thai as well, uh, this is be called a uh, clone. Uh, is the similar to Pachawat. Uh, Pachawat is also the in the Sanskrit something. So we have to how the, uh, the the sound of the uh, word the vocabulary as well. Okay, uh, this is for so uh, this one it can be translated into Thai as we were the soulmate who love each other and were happy in love, especially it has more than us. A true wearing match clothes. This was like getting the pure jewel. And then uh, for supporting it in house, I am blessed to be the gold. Ah, that is, this is for the translating of this one. And given by Sun Thuan Pu, the great poet of Thailand. Uh, this is for example ne, uh, of the first uh, loan was that used uh, through the uh, Sergeant uh, theory. And this one as well, Dendra, uh, Dendra, uh, Dendra, uh, in Thai, Dan. Uh, and this one especially because not only sound deletion but also put the mark dictate in order to kill the uh, sound of the syllable. Because according to Boris, as I mentioned earlier, we have to emphasize, we have to attention to the uh, number of the sound as we put in the line of the words, like. Uh, and the same, similar to Sanskrit. I do hope this is the same to the Bangladesh or something like this. Uh, like. 
อาจารย์ตระลาดิสนะมีพุทธอินทายเสกการันนะการันอินเดอร์ตุชิดุสาว so after we put this one uh, above this one uh, saw good uh, saw has been deleted so from chandra to jack okay uh, this time uh, this are uh, suitable to present the words according to the Thai style and another is important as well I put word chings uh, actually word chings there are so many style but I put I show you only one uh, one example Uh, work to work like this. Uh, we we can see the underlying word. Uh, poem, but uh, this is a poem such with Wang Sha, Wang Sha, Wang Sha like this. Let's become Thai. I can do the Thai writing and Thai readings. Warm. Uh, okay, and uh, we we put Garanta to choose the style as well above this one, and so change uh, according to Thai style of reading. This also, uh, but for uh, explanations for meta s i s t e also very good. Was uh, a few okay. I, I'm not e v e r s i d e but this is for the most part of the Sanskrit I do this in Thai p o i n This is also uh, for examples of the Sanskrit language, uh, and this one I uh, this is according to my research that I have published already. So. I mean the example, but this one regarding the uh, Sanskrit in Thai p o l i t i c <laughs> Thai p o l i t i c uh, So we can see this uh, Thai term as the Sanskrit Thai, Thai term from Sanskrit origin. Uh, but okay, we uh, make this one we are the word formation already according to Thai style. Like a p a t i r u in Thai, we uh, this is a form Sanskrit p a t i r u p a k like this. Uh, it's mainly form. Uh, this one I also present about the type of the word formation. According to word formation in Sanskrit, there are there are four, right? Uh, four r e g a r d the primary derivative, i t i k a and the second one, uh, secondary derivative, a t i t and compound, including p r e f i x a t i o n something like it. Uh, like this. Okay, you bring this one to uh, make the word formation. Uh, this one uh, for other. Uh, for for others, p a t i w a t p a t i w a t i like this, that l e v e l u t i o n uh, These are according to the prefix s a t i o n uh, words f o r m a t i o n and some power in Thai is a p a r like this. Uh, so the addition would be that uh, according to the uh, Thai s t y l e reading. As a f t e r n a t it is become s a b a n is still uh, come our uh, word. l a t a t a m a n u n is come from Ratcha d r m a m a n u n j a that something less. l e t us bar b e c o m e in Thai l e t s a p a r p a c h a t i p a t a i p a c h a t i p a t a i t h a i p a t a i something like this. Okay, t r y b a g i is a t r y b a t i This belong to the power. t o b a g i m a l t i l e t e r a l s t a m a p i b a n t a m a p i b a r t a m a p i b a r Uh, his uh, attention to the spellings of the words. I think uh, this will be t o o b a n g u l i because um, uh, like uh, as a spelling, no need to make the sound of the letter at the end of the word. Uh, like uh, uh, I have uh, heard, b a y a b a y a is really f e a b a y a In Bangladesh, is b a y b a y right? b a y Like this. In Thai, also say that p a i p a i Yes, like this. This is similar as compared between uh, Bangladesh, Bangladesh uh, language and Thai uh, of s a n s c r i t origins. Okay, n i r a t o s a m n i r a t o s a k a m n i r a t o s a g a r m a something like this. Okay, this is for the s a n s c r i t lovers of uh, uh, Thai language and we use. This is especially for the f i e l of p o l i t i c also very p o p u l s Okay, so. Uh, this is uh, the 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 words I use in the project. I, I show I, 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 uh, about this word. Uh, a bit flowers according to ten to uh, thirteen years c o u r s e according uh, to the political situation in Thailand in that time. So there are so many words uh, uh, we have found in that time. Uh, according to this one, this is for example, as I show you uh, about the Sanskrit word. 
And uh, number four, uh, I uh, go to the observation of Sanskrit numbers as if or in Bangkara. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm not expert in Bang Bangkala, <laughs> Mingkori, uh, but I, I, I have, uh, I am in threatened uh, just two, three days ago, <laughs> because after I have been invited from, uh, by uh, Jan Tanjathorn and Kazisat University to talk about this. So in, in the future, I think uh, I'm interested. Uh, that's what it's written one uh, to make a list of recording that such a language in Thailand as compared to Bengali, something like that. Okay, this is also the collaboration to be in, to be done in the future. Uh, like this. Uh, and textbooks, just as in uh, this course, according to Bengali uh, vocabulary, I have seen. Uh, this is a uh, a. Uh, 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 Avatar, not Avatar. It's been incarnation. Uh, did, 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 did this one? Uh, we can make the presentation according to the story. Yeah? Yes. Uh, Avatar. Same. Same. Avatar. Yes. Ah, same. Same. Uh, Avatar. I say Avatar. Uh, according to terminologies of the dictionary of Roger Society, uh, uh, Avatar. Avatar. Maybe. Uh, uh, let me check. It. Okay. And Akash. Uh, same. Uh, Akash. Uh, Agni, Jumbuna, in Thai say Jupit, Jupit means to kiss, right? <laughs> this same meaning, right? Uh, same as compared to Mingkori. And Jan, uh, uh, water, Jiwa, uh, uh, is a subject. But Chiwa, uh, Chiwa, Thai use Chiwa most because uh, I think it's uh, very convenient when we make the pronunciation. As compared to Chiwa and Chiwa, Chiwa is the most convenient, it's a suitable to make the pronunciation of Thai. And uh, so, we do is chew hard the most as compared to chewa. <laughs> and uh, Tara, Nadesh, uh, Tantri, Tara Star. Uh, is, you use Thai Dara. Uh, Dara. Uh, okay, and then Duan, Duan. In Thai also Tuan, Duan. Dubi, Dubi. In Thai also Tui. Dharma, in Thai. Uh, we come to Terma and Autumn, uh, like this. Nadi in Thai Nadi, Briwala, Briksha, to console, uh, same. Uh. Uh, this one, especially because when we borrow Sanskrit in Thai already, we have to put Sanskrit words in, into uh, the world system of Thai. So, E become U in, uh, world, uh, in Thai uh, uh, system of world. Uh, something like this. Okay? Uh, like like a uh ing uh, 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 like that. Yes. E, uh, become u uh, in Thai according to Thai side. So become si uh, uh, in to become lung uh, like this. Uh, uh. But shu, uh, this also used in Thai language. But shu sa, uh. but shu is mean domestic uh, animal, not mean uh why animal uh, animal right. So that's a uh, uh, domestic. Uh, so, Pashu. So, in Thai, we being Pashu and uh, Shatva can make other compound together, become Pashu Sa. <laughs> it means domestic uh, animal uh, to make conform the meanings of this one. Uh, not uh, understand about the wild animal or something like this. Bulushak, Pashtu, Vayu, Vishyan, Vishyan. It's been a uh, show or legitimate. We uh, yeah, shan, like, it's been immense. Uh, we are girl, uh, it's been grandma. Basha. Uh, yeah. Mayura. Uh, Mayutta yuk. Uh, Rakta. Uh, Rajan. Uh, Sabda. Uh, Siksha. Uh, it becomes the in Thai when we use. Uh, we have to put this one to the true. Uh, process of the Thai side. It become, so become Siksa after Sanskrit Siksa. Siksa. Uh, Siksa is a difficult to make session for Thai. So we just change that. Uh, I uh, become su, only one. Uh, I could do politics. Okay, uh, and soon done. Uh, soon power in Thai. Surya and Krasta, uh, something like this. Okay, this is for I uh, made observation on such in in Bangladesh.
this. I think it's similar. This is for the same root of such group. So uh, when you uh, when you are explicitly in Thailand and uh, so great people can understand Thai people will talk about uh, this very book about uh, for such group. Even if so D like this, no? So D. Yes, so so Okay, uh, I bring uh, I bring the cooperative Sanskrit uh, to uh, in order to uh, link uh, between Telegram and Bengal. I I uh, go through through YouTube. I have seen one uh, page. It is very good. He uh, uh, they uh, made about the YouTube recording to help the people learn understand about Bengali. And uh, yeah, I, I, I bring for your troops. I also mentioned my reference already at uh, my presentations. Uh, like a frame, a frame, Bangladesh uh, frame. It has also frame, but uh, I've spoken of we will do a general framework, but in the high level of subliminals, like a light language, we do also do frame. And we also put this one to uh, naming the people. My name is Prem, for example. Okay, uh, this is for Sanskrit. If if Prema Prem is in Pali, and Prem is a Sanskrit. I I I put English here, but actually in YouTube no English. Okay, uh, to make you understand for the meaning. This is for pronunciation. Uh, and the next one, uh, Sne Sneho Sneho Sneho. Uh, also from Sanskrit, but in Thai you have seen this one. What this one about? This is for Thai style. After we borrow this one to use Thai, we have to put uh, to the marks. Okay, equity to the side of that. Yeah, and then uh, we come Sne, uh, Sne. Uh, this is uh, like this. Uh, so meaning not uh, to love something like this. And this uh, 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 this this one I, I heard is different uh, for the station as compared to. A Thai. This is a kuna, na. kuna. In Bangladesh, kuna. But Thai, we say uh, kanya. Kanya. Kanya is mean daughters or young girl or something like this. We also put this one to the names of the month, uh, September. Kanya yun, example. So we never say uh, kun, kuna yun. <laughs> Maybe when I say that, that's fair to be called a different uh, okay. And, and, uh, kukura. Na. Uh, this is very strange that uh, we use to not. Uh, actually, shoe not also available in Sanskrit. Uh, yes. uh, uh, but this one is a pari. Kukura we also use, uh, but in the uh, literature language, uh, something like that. Uh, not in the uh, school language. Uh, okay. uh, and this is also similar to Thai. Parajhai. Uh, para, para in Thai also say Prajai. <laughs> it's been defeat, the fearless of the fighting each other. Okay. And so what? Uh, but uh, no, so sorry. Uh, this is Pashu. Uh, Pashu. As I mentioned already. Pashu is mean domestic or animal. Uh, animal. In Thai, uh, to make confirm the meaning, so bring Pashu and Sotwa to hook out each other. Become Pashu <laughs> Sat. This for it mentioned about domestic animal only, not not by, uh, not by animal. Okay, uh, and then this I mentioned only high, not high, high in Bengali, uh, uh, but in Thai Pai. Okay, and or another some far but too very simple. Uh, like this. Uh, shu, yeah, shu. <laughs> this same uh, this, uh, in Thai also soup. Uh, Soup or palm soup, like this. Happiness. And uh, Sunday ho, Sunday ho. In in Thai authors, uh, this has been changed according to Sanshing or this, as I mentioned five times, Sanshing, that's one. Uh, so we have Sunshi, put the turn my spell above of the word. Okay, this Thai style. So that's why I say when you stay in Thailand, you can understand uh, some word. Regarding the root of Sanskrit, or the word from Sanskrit origin, like this. 
Anando. <laughs> Anando is also Anon. Anon Anang in Thai. Okay, so yeah. uh, Supposing uh, people say, My name is Anon. Okay. Anon is with Anando. Happiness, uh, joy, delight. Okay, uh, so about my business, I talk about the Sanskrit as we uh, and use in Thai language. And it can be there's uh, okay between Bangladesh and Thailand, even difference in nature. But okay, something is a speed uh, to uh, pave the way uh, to make a link between uh, the can make a pathway in the future to be collaborative. I, I do hope that is okay. Uh, I, I I strongly believe that like the last one's part of the culture, especially since we can get away we have the relation between our country. After we uh, understand or we uh, uh, realize what like the culture already is, the other can be linked in the future. Like that. And uh, here, I would like to uh, suggest for the collaboration to be possible between uh, Thailand and Bangladesh uh, in terms of Tashma. Tashma, this is also similar to Thai because uh, when we consider the loan board in Thailand, Hari and Sanskrit help find the most in the dictionary of society, our uh, Thai society. It, uh, this one is similar to that in the Bangladesh, right? Tashma, Sanskrit also has to the most as well. Uh, okay, it is very really enjoyable. A point uh, to to consider to be considered, and uh, furthermore, I would like to suggest about the language of Bangladeshi diaspora in Thailand. This one also in uh, interesting one to be studied. Okay, uh, that's a, a few suggestions for me. I do hope in the future after this seminar, uh, the compilation uh, which we was going to be done, and you can do it more and more. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, next is a presentation by our special guest, Assistant Professor Sombat Manni Suksiri. He's the Managing Director of the Sanskrit Study Center at Singapore University. Your Excellency, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, professors, students, and uh, good morning, everyone. First of all, I would like to say thanks to Kasisan University and the Embassy of Bangladesh, Bangkok, to give me this opportunity to. Uh, bring my knowledge of Sanskrit that I have learned for many years uh, to share with you all today. My topic is uh, Sanskrit in Thai way of life and literature. Uh, I hope you understand much more about Sanskrit uh, and uh, Sanskrit language, vocabulary, uh, and the uh, relation between Thai vocabulary and Sanskrit vocabulary uh, presented by uh, Dr. Kovit Pinpuang is my friend. For me, I would like to show you uh, the relation uh, between Sanskrit and other language, that like uh, Indian language, Bangladeshi language, or Bangla Bengali language. So. First of all, I would like to introduce uh, what Sanskrit is. Uh, Sanskrit is one of the most important languages in the world that uh, 
modern Thai way of life, uh, not only Thai way of life, taught uh, from the ancient time, from the past, and also the, uh, mourn the greatest religious and heritage of Thailand. If we can't understand Sanskrit or we don't know Sanskrit or Pali, we cannot understand Thai literature as well because uh, the root of Thai literature, the root of Thai way of life derived from Sanskrit and Pali uh, through the uh, Buddhism that is the um, great religions of Thai people. Uh, in, in Thailand, you see, the great literature that just composed in the reign of this uh, present dynasty of Bangkok that we call Chakri dynasty, uh, around 250 years ago, we call Ramakian. The Ramakian is the great literature composed by Thai uh, scholars in the reign of King Rama the first of Bangkok period. In this period, you see uh, a lot of scholars, they know Sanskrit very well, and they compose the Ramakian or Thai Ramayana according to the uh, origin or original Ramayana of Valmiki. But they adopt and adapt, adapt and adopt something from the original one. So it is very important that Sanskrit play the uh, play the important role, the key role for this. Uh, you see how Sanskrit language so important to Thai language. I would like to uh, show you the example in the national anthem of Thailand. You see, the first word, the first vocabulary, start from Sanskrit, <laughs> that is Pratheer or Pradesh. When we uh, sing the national anthem of Thailand, the first words, not Thai language, but Sanskrit language, it's really amazing. When we sing Pratheer uh, Thai, yes, Pratheer Thai, that's the uh, the first word is Pradeh, that is Sanskrit language. This is uh, very important for us. If we don't know Sanskrit, we, don't, we can, can uh, understand this language. Uh, you see, this is the, how Sanskrit is so important for Thai people. Sanskrit has to not only convey the literary heritage, but also the way of life, the rituals, the way of thinking from India to Thailand, from uh, other country, you see, uh, India subcontinent, uh, we can say. Now, Thai people always use Sanskrit words directly or indirectly and Thaiize Sanskrit as their own heritage. How can I say like this? Because, you see, even the Thai people right now, some of them have no idea about Sanskrit at all but they use Sanskrit in their daily life. How? Because uh, they, I can say, they Thaiize thai -ice Sanskrit as their own heritage. I will show you more how. Uh, I would like to bring you back to the history of Thai people. How Thai people come to this area uh, in in the, by the uh, archeo uh, archaeological evidence, we can see the first Thai group appear in the history uh, in the corridor of Angkor Wat. We can see the bas relief that depict the true the army that we call Siam Kuk. Siam is the old uh, name or all the um, vocabulary that we call the people in this area. At the time, the ancient Khmer people, they dominate this area. After the declining of the old Khmer or old Cambodian people, Siam Puk, uh, Siam Puk or Siam or Thai group uh, 
emerged from the uh, declining of the Cambodian uh, Cambodian people. So this depict in the corridor of Angkor We can see this uh, drawing and the picture of the that uh, troop in in, in Angkor in Cambodia. And Thai people, how they come to this area? They come by, uh, we believe that they, the ancestors come from the South China, from Quang, uh, Guangxi uh, area, Guangxi region in the South China, come to this area uh, through the Sipsong Panna state, or through, through nowadays Lao people, Lao uh, and the Northeastern Thailand. Uh, Thai people established the first kingdom that we call Sukho Thai Kingdom in 1249 after they freed themselves from the yoke of Kampucha rule. The first kingdom we call Sukho Thai Kingdom. You see, even the first kingdom we use Sanskrit word. Sukho Daya. Sukha plus Udaya. Sukho Thai. We never use the Thai word for our kingdom at all. We use only Sanskrit or Pali words. This is called Thai kingdom uh, from 1249. And the first king of Thai people in the Thai history, his first name is Ram. Ram Kamhen. First is Pali and or Sanskrit, you can see Ram, Ram, and Kamhen is Thai word. So we use Sanskrit to name the first king of Thai kingdom. Uh, he ruled this kingdom uh, from 1279 to 1298, and uh, he introduced Sri Lankan Buddhism uh, to his kingdom and after that, Buddhism became the dominating and flourishing religion in Thailand up till the present day. Uh, it is noteworthy here that the king's name in the first ever kingdom of the Thais was Sanskrit. Uh, this I already explained. The Rama is Sanskrit and Kamaya is Thai. So this is very, very important to uh, to know that if you would like to understand Thai language and Thai way of life, you have to have the knowledge of Sanskrit and Pali. Uh, however, after the introduction of Buddhism in the first kingdom, Pali has been dominant language and played the important role in the way of life. Now, after Sanskrit, we use Pali language because we uh, follow Buddhism and Pali is the language of Buddhism. So we focus on Pali from the first time when we established the first kingdom, Sukho Thai kingdom on one. But how Sanskrit become the so important in Thai way of life in the present day? Um, actually in the royal court we have in the royal court we have the use Sanskrit loan words, most of Sanskrit loan words we use in royal court in the palace. But for the ordinary people, we use the Norman or the common Thai language. Suppose we, uh, for, for example, when we talk about the color, if you use the color in daily life in the common people, amongst the common people, we we, we use the word dang, dang means red. But when we use in the literature or in the uh, palace, we use Sanskrit or Pali word like a rakta or lohita, like this. Uh, in, uh, we, we use uh, the, the, the two levels of language, especially Pali and Sanskrit language in the Unless in the royal courts, like this, for long, long time, for more than uh, 500 years. Uh, till the present dynasty, I mean, uh, around 250 years ago, in the Bangkok period, 
Thai people use the Sanskrit as their own heritage because I see, uh, you see, this uh, Bangkok period, uh, the Sanskrit was gradually getting its popularity like in the Chen ancient Khmer Kingdom. The name of all kings of the Chakri dynasty were Rama. The first king of the Chakri dynasty was named King Rama the first. And now we have King Rama the tenth. All kings was named uh, after Ram or the ideal king in Ramayana. So it means in the royal court, Sanskrit and Bali was very, very important. Um, after 100 years, after the establishment of Bangkok, the King Rama the Sixth he is really expert in Sanskrit. He loves Sanskrit. He was graduate uh, from the uh, British or Britain, Great Britain at the time. When he came back to Thailand, he was on his throne and he ordered the Thai people for the first time to have their own surname. You see, before that, we never have our surname. When we uh, call or we identify someone, we identify ourselves, we just call, suppose, uh, my name is Dan or Red. Uh, Mr. Dan, the son of Mr. White, something like this. I think this happened in uh, the Muslim uh, tradition, right? But in Thailand, we in the ancient time before King Rama the Sikh, we used this system to identify many, many people, all people. Suppose we have uh, so many Mr. Red and son of Mr. White, two or three, okay. Mr. Red, son of Mr. White in that village, in this village, in the same village, this is in the south of this village, in the north of this village. We have never have our own family name or surname. So when King Rama the Sikh come, uh, came back from Great Britain, oh, he loved Sanskrit very much. And then uh, he, when he tried to address so many people, uh, he confused, oh, this Mr. Red, this Mr. Yellow, oh, so many red, so many yellow. Okay, you should have your surname from this. And his subject, asking that, how can we identify ourselves because we have a lot of people here? So, okay, I will give you a surname and I will give you the very, very beautiful surname by Sanskrit words. So, after that, he gave it subject surname by Sanskrit loan words. So, after this period, around 150 years ago, Sanskrit became the most popular language in this area because people always use their surname by Sanskrit longer by the order of King Lama the Sikh. This is the history of Thailand. So, apart from the uh, using surname by Sanskrit word. Uh, King Rama the Sixth was uh, credited in Sanskrit with the letter from Great Britain. And then he regularly present the lovely surname to his subject and all surname almost were in Sanskrit that I already told you. Moreover, he composed a, nom a number of dramas based on Sanskrit drama such as Sakuttala, Savitri and so on. And um, from that period, Sanskrit had got more popularity among the Thais. This is the, his contribution, the contribution of King Rama the Sikh to uh, Sanskrit uh, language and to Thai people. At the present, I would like to bring you to the way of life of Thai people at the present day. Uh, actually, Thai language is very rich in 
words and vocabulary which the Thais can use at their will. Uh, this we have to owe this to Sanskrit and Bali uh, because the, such a low words are ready to use for many purposes, uh, such uh, as the communication in daily life, composition of verses, and the most important uses of Sanskrit and Bali in the modern Thai society is naming person. Is really really important for us. Uh, when we would like to name the newborn baby, we nowadays we never use other language except Bali and Sanskrit. Why? Because we believe that Sanskrit and Bali is really sacred and really beautiful and meaningful language, much more than other language that we use in daily life. Sometimes, you see, in Thai tradition, it's not like uh, in India, I'm not sure that in Bangladesh or not. Because, you see, Thai people can change their name, their surname, at any time they want. It's not this cannot happen in India or I'm not sure in Bangladesh also. Uh, when we feel our name is not uh, beautiful or it should uh, have something, uh, we, we have also the superstition. We believe that this letter, this um, consonant is not, lucky, uh, is not lucky or unlucky for our name, so we have to change our name. We have to change our surname. So when we would like to change our name or surname, we always use Sanskrit and Bali language. This happened in Thai way of life. So in uh, the present day, even in the generation, we can say Gen X and Gen Y and Gen C, even now, they uh, prefer Sanskrit and Pali name much more than other language. And you see, when we give the nickname to the, 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 the boy and girls, just newborn, we always use the Western vocabulary, Western language, like a French or British or English language to give the nickname to the baby or girl and boys. But when we give them, uh, when we give them their real name, we use only Sanskrit and Pali words. For example, I will show you this, uh, the uh, vocabulary and the name of Thai people that we use Sanskrit and Pali and the meaning that we use in Thai society. Like a, in Thai we pronounce Wichian derived from Wachara or Wachira in Bali, Wachara in Sanskrit. It means diamond. The next word is Anusha or in Thai we use only Anusha. We pronounce long, long vowel. Anusha, we, we, we don't use Anusha. Anusha we use for uh, boy, not for uh, girl. It's quite opposite to the original word that Anusha must be girl. But in Thai, we use for boy only. Anusha means younger brother. Kanda in Thai language derived from Kanta or Kanta in Bali. That means Below. <laughs> and Chanatipa or Chanatip in Thai language, Chanatipa is mean big boss or king. And uh, next is Anom. We pronounce in Thai language Anom. That uh, Ajahn, uh, Dr. Kovic just mentioned that we have some the silent sound. Ananga, we pronounce only Anom. Derived from Ananga in Sanskrit and in Bali, it's mean pretty. But you see, Ananga is the name of Cupid 
of karma deva but we use for women only for girl only not for 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 boy it's uh, quite opposite and the word nakon or nakara in thai language we pronounce nakon nakara is Bali and Sanskrit mean city and town and sasikan sasikanta and sasikanta lovely like the moon or the, the love by the moon you can say suti derived from su and ti it's mean intelligent and my name sombat derived from Sanskrit sampati and Bali also sampati the same meaning wealth or prosperity yeah, we have the same root and same meaning so I would like to say about the future of Sanskrit and uh, Pali language in Thai society uh, as the Sanskritist I study Sanskrit for a long long time so for so many years uh, from the college and from the university and I also have chance to share my knowledge to my student. Uh, I would like to talk about the future of Sanskrit in Thailand. We do hope that the, the, the bright future of this language is still here because we still have so many students and professors who are teaching this language in the university, in the Northeastern University, in the Northern University, in Bangkok, and in the Southern area of Thailand. All of them, I mean, uh, most of them are our students. They can uh, spread this language all over Thailand. Uh, after the King Rama the Sikh that I already told you, already mentioned his con contribution uh, to the Thai society, uh, to Sanskrit spreading in, uh, among Thai people. So we do hope that this language will be the root of Thai society. And I will relate this root, our root means, I mean Sanskrit language, with the Mankara language that uh, Dr. Kovic just mentioned, that we have the same root, we have the same vocabulary, it means we have the same meaning, same idea, same thought, and uh, same way of life, uh, even uh, some are different. So uh, I hope this will be connect both country, Thailand and Bangladesh, with the same root that is Sanskrit. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the presentation. Um, ladies and gentlemen, our third keynote speaker is also a special guest. He's a specialist from Bangladesh, um, Professor Hakim Arif. He's the Director General of the International Mother Language Institute in Taga. And um, he was a former professor at the Department of Linguistics at the University of Taka, um, but now he's a professor at the um, Department of Communication Disorders. Um, professor Hakim Arif, um, let us know if you're ready. Yeah, Andrew, can you just uh, hear me? Uh, just a moment, please. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. 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 Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, can you, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Is it okay for... Yeah, you can start.
okay?
and this made the historical uh, relationship uh, uh, between Bengali and Sanskrit languages. Regarding the history of Bangla, there is a popular perception that Bengali is derived from Sanskrit languages. But for the last couple of years, uh, the reverse investigation by the famous linguist of Bangladesh and Indian subcontinent, it is found that Bengali language is just not originated from Sanskrit language directly, but from Prakito. Prakito form. It is a dialect of ordinary people uh, of India uh, during the contemporary uh, time of Sanskrit. In the history of, uh, if we just uh, see the history of Indian languages, especially Hindu Indian languages, Sanskrit is called Old Indo Aryan, which is derived from Vedic written speech. Uh, to perform and the uh, message of the God perfect, perfectly. So, Sanskrit was never a mother language of ordinary Indian people, rather, it, it is started to be used by the Brahma. That's why Sanskrit is uh, regarded as the language of religion in India. Still, it is used as the religion language in India. Now, I am just providing um, a chronology of the history. Uh, origin of Bengali, and uh, this tries to relate uh, is is origin with Sanskrit language. According to Chatterjee, uh, Vedic and Sanskrit dialect can be regarded as the representation of in the old Indian language, language. And at the same time, old Indian language uh, gradually turns into Prakrit, that means Prakrit, mm -hmm. including Pali, and um, which was written by the great, uh, uh, which was um, uh, 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 written by uh, uh, great emperor Ashoka and some other good Buddhist camp. And uh, gradually, Prakrit spread out all over uh, India and uh, with different names. Sometimes uh, these are uh, uh, some pra Prakrit are uh, called uh, Shorushri, Maharashtri. Uh, Puishati and Magadhi. And Bengali as a language is developed as a new Indo European language from Magadhi Prakrit. That means the Prakrit that was used, uh, used to use by the people belong to Eastern India. So it is evident that Bengali is not directly originated from Sanskrit, but it is a distant uh, language developed from Sanskrit. But though Bangla is not derived, directly derived from Sanskrit language, but Bangla language is seriously influenced by Sanskrit, especially its vocabulary, grammar, script, and everyday language. Now you see, there is the uh, flowchart of Bengali is derived from an uh, Indo Indian language, that means Sanskrit. Indo Indian Sanskrit was used. Uh, 1500 BC to 600 BC, then uh, it turns into Hindu, Middle Indo Indian language, that means uh, Pali, uh, Prakito, uh, used to use uh, during 600 BC to 1100 uh, BC. And the new Indo Indian language, that is Bengali, and some other Indian languages start to, uh, to be used uh, during thousands, thousands years ago. Now, I would like to uh, provide a description of Bengali word category, which is based on Sanskrit origin, Sanskrit dominance. In, in our language, Bengali gets the categorization on the basis of Sanskrit domination. Bengali word is broadly categorized into two classes. First of all, Sanskrit or Sanskritized word, and then non Sanskrit, Sanskritized word. Sanskrit and Sanskrit, Sanskritized word. Are further classified into three forms. First of all, Totsu. Totsu means the Sanskrit word which is used in Bangla without any change, without any change like pronunciation or structure. That's why I can provide an example is Kormo. Kormo is a Sanskrit word. It is also still also used in our language and vocabulary and dictionary. And then other categories, Orthotosmo. That means 
that functional form which is somehow modified because of different differentiation. And that's why finally it gets a different spelling also. That's why comma is derived from karma. Com that's karma is other person. And finally thought over the Shonspit word which is derived from Shonspit to Prakrit with the long process. Now we can say Kam. Kam is a Tadbu uh, word and which is basically derived from Karma with the process of uh, Prakrit. Now we can say that in our language almost more than 50% of the two Tadbu word uh, is derived from Shonspit origin and other non Shonspit origin word indicates the word which are gathered from uh, some native source of our area, uh, area and, and foreign languages like Farsi, uh, Arabic, Portuguese, English. Thus we can say that Sanskrit language and Sanskrit word also influence our word category. And on the basis of word category, in our language, there develop two uh, written form. One is Shadu written form and other is Choli written form. Shadu written form in this form that uh, is a written form which uh, which usually follows uh some word that means Sanskrit word and the synthetic pattern is fully defined and fixed. At the same time uh Choli Aksha that is another form, another written form relates to the existence of non Sanskrit word that means non uh some word and the syntax is very informal and also fixed in this form. That's why we can say that Bengali written expression is also categorized by the existence of Shonskrit language. And, and this two division also follows a deductive approach in the learning, learning, language learning activities in our class. This is because mixing these two forms of uh, these two forms, that means Shadow and Sulit language in one sentence is a punishable purpose in the script. Now come to the Bangla grammar and short Sri case. Bengali traditional grammar is basically described and analyzed with the inflation of presence of Sanskrit linguistic category. That's why many top topics of our grammar, especially uh, morphosynthesis, especially word categories like Shondi, compounding, case grammar, Post-position, affixation process contain two parts. One is Sanskrit part, and another is another is uh, Bengali part. And, and every student needs to get uh, the expertise of these two parts to comprehend Bangla tradition grammar seriously. Bengali script. Bengali script, and now we use uh, uh, the script to write Bangla language is called Bengali script. But historically, this Bengali script uh, is derived from Brahmi script. Brahmi script means the script that was used to transcribe from Sanskrit language. So, for this reason, Bengali script exclusively follows Sanskrit tradition, especially uh, in the alphabet and the number of alphabet, and also forming Aerograph and also rules of orthography and also deceit and directional writing. In every aspect, Bengali writing system also follows Sanskrit tradition. So it is not an exaggeration uh, to say that Brahmi script writing system remains the core of Bengali writing system. Now, finally, what I would say, uh, Sanskrit language, especially Sanskrit word is seriously is used in our everyday use because uh, Bengali literate people uh, subconsciously or consciously get cognitive impetus to use Sanskritized word in their both written and spoken form to make you know why uh, Bengali people uh, uh, always prefer to use Sanskrit word, especially in their uh, written form, to make uh, their expression and their style uh, 
more sophisticated, elegant, and formal. Formal. Bengali people, especially, belong to a different professional and technical category. They prefer to use a tocho bhasha or shadu form to make their expression more official and formal. For example, um, Bengali people uh, in the official form use brickho manner instead of gats manner and uh, the same term macho shaktaha uh, instead of macho to make so that people will uh, feel it, it is more uh, official and formal. In addition, all there is a convention by the Bangladesh government uh, that all government procedures, ordinance, declaration, and acts are usually written in Shaduru Bhasha, uh, in the form of uh, uh, which is written with Sanskrit. And that was, that was my presentation. And in this presentation, uh, I'd like to explain though Bengali language. Is a language is a living language of South Asia is not directly derived from uh, the Sanskrit origin, but Sanskrit as language, especially word category, are seriously influencing our linguistic expression both in the uh, written and language, written and oral form. Thank you and very much for your patience here. Thank you so much for um, such an informative presentation. Now is the time for the Q&A session. Let us know if any of the audiences here um, have questions to ask of our speakers. Yes, sure. Uh, I have a question to Dr. Sampad. I think Dr. Sampad is just outside the room. So. <laughs> Okay. I think uh, the same question can be answered by uh, Kavit. Okay. Uh, my first question is uh, as Ramakya. Uh, you have Ramakya, we have Ramayana and Ramayana. Uh, the original Ramakya is written in poem or in um, uh, prose? That is my first question. And secondly, I have uh, we have found a number of similarities um, uh, between the two languages, I and uh, Bangla, uh, and uh, which was rightly mentioned by our uh, expert from uh, Bangladesh, uh, Professor Hakimani, that Bangla is not directly derived from Sanskrit. Uh, so does Thai. Thai is not totally derived from Sanskrit. Yeah. Both, both the languages uh, took number of words, good number of words uh, in their language. Uh, yeah. So uh, that is another similarity that we are getting uh, that both Thai and Bangla are. And another uh, uh, thing I found that uh, it was also in, my, in the speech of our um, uh, ambassador that both the uh, scripts are from uh, derived from Brahmi script. So I would like to know a little bit of uh, detail about Thai that uh, the writing is not the same. And another thing uh, while learning Thai, I found that um, in Thai, uh, we do not have any word division in a, the sentence. The total in, in Bangla language, it, it, there is a serious division on the basis of Sanskrit word. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. In Bangla, we have the division, word division. But right. in Sanskrit, we uh, in uh, Thai, we do not have word division. After uh, the completion of a complete sentence, we have a uh, space to find out that there is a uh, there is a difference. So uh, my question is, 
what is the reason or what is the history behind it as it is an issue of script. So basically, uh, my question is Dr. Sampad and Dr. Um, Kiwi that um, uh, my first question regarding uh, Ramakian and secondly about the Brahmi script. Thank you. Lama uh, Yes. Ah, so sorry. I just uh, come back from signing my uh, student thesis. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, the difference between uh, Warumiki Ramayana and Thai Ramki or Thai Ramayana is uh, about the characters of the lead, uh, the lead, leading characters, not Ram, not Sita, because Ram is the uh, ideal king for Thailand. Sita is the ideal wife for Thai people. But the uh, major difference is the role of Hanuman. Yeah, the uh, soldier of Ram. In Varmiki Ramayana, Hanuman is celebrity. But in Thai Ramakin, Ram, uh, uh, sorry, Hanuman have 5,006 wives. He have a lot of wife and children. And why? Why this can happen? Because you see, in the period of the Chakri dynasty, the first king, that is King Rama the first, after the defeat of Thai Kingdom, I mean Thai Kingdom was defeated by Burmese troops, and Thai Kingdom would like to uh, I mean, to, 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 to get more and more strain again and again. So at that time, we have really less population compared with Burmese troops. So we have to, uh, I mean, to get more and more the, the, the uh, human, human uh, power. So we have to recruit new soldiers. And how can we get this without produce the offspring of the, <coughs> uh, I mean, the, the, the main, main powers, we cannot uh, fight with Burmese troops. So they change the character of Hanuman to become the womanizer, not celebrity. This is the major character of Ramayana, Thai Ramakian, that's so different from origin Varanki Ramayana. We can notice very easy. When uh, I went to India, I present this paper. Indian scholars, really amazing. <laughs> they are amazed that, oh, how can Hanuman, our Hanuman become womanizer in Thailand? How can? Yeah, this is our God. So, and, and another thing that is quite different from uh, Indian Ramayana, that is, it's safe in Thai Ramayana, that this story is it's like a fiction. It's fiction. It's not in reality. It's not real. But Indian Ramayana is real. It's not fiction. So when we talk about this, we have different attitude to Ramayana. I have to be careful about talking of Hanuman in front of Indian scholar. When I show, I present, oh, we, we love Hanuman very much because he has a lot of wife. Indian scholar can't accept it. I have to be careful. This is the different, very much different between origin Varamiki Ramayana and Indian uh, and Thai Ramayana or Thai Ramayana.
my question was whether it is prose or poetry, the original um, Ramatia. Uh -huh. Whether it is prose or poetry, it is written in poem oh. or in prose. Okay. Uh, actually, Thai Ramatia is uh, written in uh, verses. Verses. In, in verses. And some part, only some part that is in prose. And only a few parts that is in prose. Most are in verses. So, it's like a, the um, origin Varunki Rama in, 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 in verses. So, according to Thai uh, language, as you asked me, I, I think uh, for uh, when, when we, we, we study about the language memory last yeah, at the, at the outset, we uh, talk about the language memory. Thai belongs to Thai language memory, right? But the uh, Bing Bingri belong to the Indo-European and sub branch right, to indo iranian and to indo alayan Indo iranian indo iranian Ah, yeah, like this. And uh, so uh, the, the the first uh, the, uh, like a uh, uh, Thai when we we study Thai we have to understand about the Thai structure of the sentence first, right? Thai is a is a subject uh, S V O, right? Is a subject a verbs and object like this. As on the contrary, as compared to Sanskrit, like so this uh, S V F O V, like this S O V. Ah yes, uh, but uh, in in Bengali the uh, S O V or not the same. Ah yes. But on the contrary, as compared to English, uh, is a is a SBO. But uh, otherwise, come from the same language, like right? <laughs> yes, like this. Uh, in in the group of Indo-Europeans in uh, Indo-Iranian, maybe some something has changed between uh, each language, like English, right? Because English has been adopted more and more, so we can easily at the present time right now. It's maybe different as compared to the first half, right? Uh, like but Thai is a different trick because that is we go like uh, one, one, uh, one question to, to users I because I focus on about the style change. When when Sanskrit influence to Bengali, is has been used to the true style change or not before using in Bengali. Like like, like uh, when you bring uh, uh, for example or uh, which one? Uh, uh, pulu shop, uh, pu, uh, pulu shop, something like this. Pulu, uh, pulu shop. Ah, uh, in Thai we say pulu, pulu like this. Uh, this is for, uh, this has gone through the true South Shings already in equity to Thai style. In Bengali, you have used the uh, South Shings or not like this for 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 using in Bengali. You 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 hear my voice? Yes, you. you are asking a uh, uh, question to me. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, I, 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 I asked about the sound change when you uh, employ Sanskrit word uh, yeah. in Bengali. Huh? Yes. Uh, because in Thai, when we bring this one to use, we have to change the sounds of the Sanskrit or original uh, to uh, Thai, uh, Thai, Thai language. But Bengali, I don't understand about the system of the sound. So when you use the Sanskrit in Bengali, you have to change yeah. the sound of the Sanskrit or original or not. Yeah, yeah. Uh, concerning using Sanskrit word in Bengali, there are mainly three processes I have already mentioned. One is uh, the word which is called Totsama, that means we use uh, the same word used in uh, Sanskrit language because both Sanskrit and Bangla, we have both phonological system. That's why we, we are able to produce the Sanskrit word that is uh, used in that uh, uh, same pronunciation. And another another word is called ortho tatsama. That means half Sanskritized. That means somehow uh, the illiterate people cannot pronounce the Sanskrit word exactly. That's why they, during pronunciation utterance they change a little bit. That's why like um, like the name of Bengali man Abrahayan Abrahayan. It is Sanskrit wise but but most of the Bengali people use as Ogra, Ogra, like it's a kind of changes. That's why since there is a, a big pronunciation change, that's why it is called Ordo Shtatsho, that means 
half Sanskrit act. And now there is another process uh, of Bengal word which is which originally was Sanskrit word, but it is derived from Sanskrit through a uh, long process with Prakrit. That means Prakrit means the people of uh, language body the people. That means the origin of Sanskrit word is totally changed and it gives the different form. Like uh, I can just give an example. Uh, Kormo. Kormo that means in, in, in English it is it is wa. It, it is Sanskrit word and we can pronounce Kormo also. And we use this word in our formal situation in written script. But from Kormo, when some people say, some illiterate, illiterate people, uh, those who are not uh, uh, familiar with Sanskrit phonological system, they use it as Kormo. Kormo. There is a change. We also use this word in our language, and the, the another form is kam, which is derived from Sanskrit, but with a process of long process uh, of traffic. And so uh, this Sanskrit word has three trans, three type of translation. I think so. This so okay. Yes, thank you very much, sir. I got it, and yeah. it's a very good explanation for this one. Thank you so much, sir. We have more questions. Uh, good morning, everybody. Sorry, uh, first of all, thank you very much, sir, for your very nice presentations to all three speakers. Uh, I would like to draw attention to another aspect of our life that is religion, and uh, to be specific, the uh, language of the scriptures. As I can see in our case, that uh, Arabi has got a huge influence on the language of Bengali Muslims, especially the naming right. of our children. Right. So what fascinates me is most is that uh, Pali is being the uh, language of the scriptures of Gautam Buddha or the Buddhism, or right. Theravada Buddhism to be specific. Uh, I don't see much of the influence in your culture or in your society. Could you please explain what is the reason behind it? Why Pali is not as influential as Arabic in my country. Yes. That means uh, you are asking to me, to him? Uh, no, sir. Uh, to the Thai experts. To oh. the Thai experts, sir. Thai experts. Thank you for your uh, very good questions. Uh, compared to the Arabic in Bangladesh, in your uh, society, uh, when we talk about the Sanskrit and Pali, you ask me why Pali is not so uh, very much influenced uh, in Thai language, Thai vocabulary, you say like this. Yeah. So, actually, you see, when Thai people uh, English from uh, for the first time in the Super Thai Kingdom, the first period, uh, before that, around six or seven hundred years ago, Thai people uh, uh, dominate or uh, rule, uh, was, was, was ruled by the ancient Cambodia kingdom. They use Sanskrit. Their tradition, their language, their religion and they, their way of life were from India subcontinent. So the, the dominant language is Sanskrit. When Thai Kingdom, the first Thai Kingdom, emerged from that, they introduced uh, Buddhism from Sri Lanka, and they used Pali as their uh, the religion, religious language. But anyway, they still use both Sanskrit and Pali, and. Bali is very, very important and played a key role in the monastery, Buddhist monastery. But in the way of life, in the ordinary, uh, or ordinary people, they use their old tradition, that is Sanskrit. That's why Bali is not quite, uh, I mean, it's not quite popular as Sanskrit in their way of life. And as I told you, when King Rama the Sixth came back from Great Britain, 
promote Sanskrit a lot. And it means he remind our DNA of Sanskrit using in the ancient time. So we love Sanskrit. And you see, even Sanskrit and Pali, we use the same vocabulary, not quite different, not, not quite different. Uh, you see, sometimes we use Sanskrit in the written or writing form. When we uh, write the word karma, karma, we use Sanskrit vocabulary in letter, karma. But when we pronounce, we pronounce in Pali, karma. We never yeah. pronounce karma. And like uh, when we use uh, Sanskrit word in written, in writing, we shratha, the faith, faith, shratha. But we pronounce in Pali language, we pronounce sattha. We mix both together. So this is the happen in Thai society. And now, even the, in the influence of Western language, Western language like English or French, we uh, also use the new vocabulary uh, that newly coined by the Royal Society. Sometimes uh, we can uh, make it popular. Like uh, when we use new word, like a new new word for technology, computer, for example. Uh, the Royal Society would like to use Sanskrit and Pali in daily life, like uh, in the past. But we can make it. I mean, we can uh, make it popular among Thai people because. Everything go fast. The Royal Society take suppose we have new word from the, 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 the uh, I mean from social media. Uh, one month we have around ten or twelve or one hundred words, but the Royal Royal Society can make only one or two words per month, so we can make it uh, in time. So people use the word computer. The Royal Society, uh, and Royal Society uh, would like us to use Kanita Kara. Kanita Kara. Kanita means mathematics, Mathematic. right? Kara means doing. Kanita Koan, we pronounce. <laughs> Nobody use this word. Uh, Kanita Koan. Oh, we use the computer. Yeah, computer. It's very, very convenient uh, for us. Is it for example? That's why uh, the Sanskrit and Bali now, I mean, so we, we can use in uh, daily life according to the Royal Society, but sometimes when we don't know how to use other words, the new word that uh, people use in this society, we try to make it Sanskrit or Ali. If it's popular, it's okay, but nowadays it's very difficult to make it popular. We use the only some some slang, high slang, or English or French slang. This is the situation in this society, right? Any more questions? Is it me? How hard, me? No? Okay, so uh, if there is no more question, then, then I think it is time to end the seminar, okay? Um, the final part of today's program is a vote of thanks by Ms. Maleka Fangin, Deputy Chief of Mission and Minister Political of the Embassy of Bangladesh. Please. His Excellency Mr. Muhammad Abdul Hai, Ambassador of Bangladesh to Thailand. 
today's three distinguished uh, panelists, Associate Professor Dr. Poi Kim Wang, Associate Professor Dr. Sombat Mang Mi Suksere, Professor Dr. Hakim Ari, distinguished guest, ladies and gentlemen. I thank you all for your kind presence at our event today. On the occasion of celebrating the International Mother Language Day 2023, the joint initiative by the Embassy of Bangladesh in Bangkok and Kassip Sat University, Thailand, to hold an academic seminar on Bangla and Thai studies in search of a common root between Bangla and Thai has come to an end. However, this end is only a new beginning of a prospective progressive future in the bilateral relations between Bangladesh and Thailand. Our two countries have deep rooted linkages in relation to culture, religion, language, tourism, food, and other issues of common bonding, which have made our people-to-people -people contacts more intense and engaging. For today's successful endeavor, on behalf of both the organizers, at first I would like to profusely thank the three academic scholars, Dr. Kovic, Dr. Sombat, and Dr. Hakim, for their thoughtful and knowledgeable deliberations. Their well-researched discussion has enriched our knowledge of Bangla and Thai languages, and created a foundation for more future research. I hope both Kasipsat University and Bangladesh Embassy will work together in further collaboration of tracing the common root of Bangla and Thai languages, which is Sanskrit. I would like to keep on record our sincere thanks and appreciation to Dr. Ladawan Wangjit, Vice President for Academic Affairs and Director of Kasipsat University International College, and Dr. Bunja Chinna Sri, Deputy Director of Kasipsat University International College for successful hosting of today's seminar at this prestigious institution. My warm appreciation goes to Ajahn Rujira and Ajahn Kitsada, the Masters of Ceremony today for their cooperation and continuous support in organizing the event. I thank all the supporting staff of Kasipsat University and the Bangladesh Embassy for their hard work for a successful event. I'd also like to extend our sincere thanks to the distinguished guests and particularly the students who are present here for their gracious presence at today's event. Last but not the least, I'd like to convey heartfelt thanks to His Excellency the Ambassador of Bangladesh to Thailand for his kind guidance in organizing the academic seminar and also my other colleagues, particularly Councillor Mr. Nithar Odhikari for their all efforts. I believe this kind of academic exercise may be the finest way to celebrate, to promote the spirit of multilingualism, multiculturalism on International Mother Language Day, and the best possible way to pay profound homage to our language martyrs who sacrificed their lives in 1952 to speak in their mother tongue, Bangla. I thank you all. Shokul ke dhonnabad, kapkun ka. Thank you so much. Um, we are going to have a photo session again. Um, this time, please, the three panelists in front of the room, uh, together with Mr. Ambassador. One, one is <laughs> online. Online and offline. Hello, Kat. Hello, Kat. Hello, Kat. Hello, Kat. Okay, one, two, three. Also, this time, uh, the officials and associates, please join. Thank you. 
attend now students. Now all the students, please join us. เรียนเชิญนิสิตนะครับทุกท่านเลยมาถ่ายรูปพร้อมกันนะครับ